Hey y'all. So, uh, it's Wednesday. If you don't know who I am, I'm Lena. Cause you know, I have like 1500 friends and friends and some of you, I don't know at all. So if you're catching this, um, I'm Lena and I am excited to be here to share a personal story because you know, I am just working through my own practice of getting better at being live on Facebook. It's not my favorite thing. And as a women's coach who helps women, busy women, driven women break free from the soul sucking grind. Part of my work is to be seen. And I have a perfection complex that I work on every day. <laughs> and it can be difficult for me to, you know, just come on and be like not expect myself to do it like somebody else. So I had this big plan uh, to share a story about, um, you know, one of my, one of me and my client and how it, you know, relates to what I'm going to share with you right now. But I decided just to hold myself accountable to the promise that I made to come on here every Wednesday. And whether that means you're watching or not, it's a promise I made to myself, a commitment I made to my coach and our group to just keep growing and growing can be difficult, right? Am I alone? And growing can be even more difficult when you're in, uh, when you do some of it publicly. Um, it means I'm just giving myself permission to show up imperfect and I'm just going for it. So here's what happened. So yesterday, last night, I, and Katie, you might actually enjoy this. I had my fourth date with this gentleman who shall remain nameless, <laughs> everyone. Um, we went on a yoga date and he had never done yoga before. And my friend said to me, she's like, wow, he really likes you. <laughs> I was like, maybe, yeah. But it was fun. Um, we had a good time. But the point is, so on the way to the date, or on the way to the date, we're on the date. On the way to the class, and you can see I'm holding my giant, <laughs> my giant clear cords. <laughs> um, we were chatting because, well, because we're in the car together, but we're chatting and he was telling me how like, he was really tired. Our plan, tentative plan, was to go to, to yoga, maybe grab a bite to eat afterwards. But he was up so late the night prior doing work that he wasn't really sure if it would feel good to go for dinner after. I'm like, cool, right? I'm no skin off my back. I'm good. Um, I can always make something for myself. And he said to me, I might want to just go back and go to sleep. And I, I knew that he meant in his own house, right? But he clarified that for me just in case there was any misunderstanding. He's like, I mean at my own house. I'm like, I gotcha. But what that brought up was dating styles and a conversation around guardedness, um, you know, protection and like taking it slow, but also like my previous life of being an anxious attached dater. So what does that mean? So how do I best explain this? So an anxious attached dater is somebody who uh, really has a lot of emotional energy and investment in the person, right? They might not even know that person very well, but they find themselves wanting to be around them a lot. Um, for me, it showed up in my life as needing that person to like respond in a certain amount of time, potentially respond in a certain way so that I felt seen, heard, validated, felt, um, and liked because when I was younger, I was made fun of because I was a chubby kid. And one of my friends who I thought was my friend who didn't look much different than I did in my opinion. Uh, I was going, we were all going out for recess um, and I had my shorts and I'm going to run down the hill to play and I was not a very sporty girl, which is why I love yoga, um, cause I'm good at it. And um, it's like my sports outlet. But the point is she made fun of me. She called me thunder thighs and I was 12 and that felt hurtful and I was confused and really disappointed and wondered like, and I, and from that moment, I looked at myself totally differently and it scarred my self-confidence. It scarred how I saw myself and it shaped the way that I showed up in relationships forever for like 20 years. Okay. So that's part of why I date. That's part of why I had an anxious attachment dating style because this part of me that was wounded, um, you know, was looking for love 
from another person before I gave it to myself. And so it just begs the question of like, how are you dating? Like, how are you showing up in the dating world? You know, one of my clients recently reached out to me to work with me specifically around her inner girl, her inner little girl work. So I'm, I'm, an expert in that because I helped myself through it through therapy and inner family systems and coaching. But her inner little girl was showing up in her dating life, like literally driving the bus of her dating life. Her inner little girl needed attention. So all of us have an inner wounded part. They have layers. They show up in different places at different times um, and they express in different ways, but they all want something that they didn't get when they were the age that they were and that they're not getting from you now. So one way that I help my clients and I've helped myself uh, come to a more secure space in dating and also secure within themselves, myself, is to re-parent that I walk them through this process to reparent the inner little child, the part of themselves that is seeking love, attention, validation, security, safety, you name it. Those are just like the top four or five that I could roll off my head um, from another person and not themselves. And so that just really like when I had this conversation with my date last night, just like remembering when I was that person, remembering when, uh, and it doesn't mean, let me just back that up, remembering when I led in that way, which is why, you know, I can help my client who is having this issue, like her and her little child driving the bus, you know, seeking that attention and validation, help her to reparent this part of her. And we do that in a way that I call a trifecta meditation. And I'm not gonna walk you through the whole process, but it involves a visualization of your highest self that she um, creates so that she can easily access that vision and that part of herself when she's not working with me. And um, the center, right, like yourself, and then the inner little child, the the one that is giving you, the one that's driving the bus, if you will. So in this, with my client, it was the one who was driving the bus. And so I walk her through this process so that she can call forward her higher self, communicate through that part of her to the inner little child and give that part of her what she needs so that now when she goes on dates and she does this meditation before she goes on all of her dates and it has helped her to show up in a more relaxed way. Relaxed and confident, secure and steady, in an open space to to receive what this other person has in front of her, to decide if she wants to see that person again, instead of when she was dating from her inner little child who was really just wanting that person to give her the attention that she wasn't getting. And so it wasn't so much about um, making a connection with the person across from her. It was more about that inner little child having a need that was not met by herself, That uh, meaning my client, and we're calling her today, we're calling her Mary. Um, That is not her name, Mary. Um, But for her to access that within so that her inner little child is free to be a passenger on the bus, right? (laughs) Like instead of the one driving the bus and bringing all sorts of stress and anxiety to her and causing her to have uh, to have those feelings like I've experienced of anxious attachment dating. By the way, my dog is driving me bonkers. Look at what she's doing. Maddie, mommy loves you. She totally wants to take a walk right now. Are you coming in? Okay, now she's coming in. All right, so I've spent a little longer than I had anticipated, got a little bit more excited than I had expected. Um, I'm grateful that for whoever is watching is watching, and I hope that this brought you some so, some value because it's my mission. And like I said, I'm practicing. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a healing perfectionist. I am a recovering perfectionist. So getting on here to practice letting myself be seen in, in imperfection It's just part of my growth. So if this resonated with you at all, please comment. And if you are watching the replay, please state replay. I hope to see you next Wednesday when I will be back with another fancy topic. And I'll let you know that, yes, 
I am seeing the date man again who shall remain nameless. I'm gonna have to give him a fake name. Like, I wanna call him Mr. X, it's very Howard Stern of me, but um, we're going out Friday. We're going to the balloon races, so wish me luck. Bye, y'all.